All right, in this video, we're going to talk about adding and subtracting rational expressions. Um, so one thing I want to point out here at the beginning is that these are expressions. And all an expression is, it basically says, hey, there's not an equal sign in there. So some of the tricks that you would use to solve a rational equation, and I'm going to do some of those as well um, in a different video, you can't do the same things here. So it's equivalent to just, you know, imagine you had one half plus one third and you're trying to simplify that down. So the same idea here. Well, for adding and subtracting fractions, just like with numbers, you have to have common denominators. So notice there's an x in the bottom of the left side and x squared in the bottom of the right side. Well, to get your common denominator, the least common multiple of x and x squared is x squared. So you'd have to multiply the top by x and the bottom by x of the first fraction. And then you wouldn't have to do anything at all to the other one. So if I simplify the first fraction, I'll get 2 times x over x squared plus 3 times, or excuse me, 3 over x squared. And, you know, it doesn't really feel like you're doing much, but the idea usually of these problems is they just want you to write things as a single fraction. So I've got 2x plus 3 over x squared, and that would now be considered a more simplified expression of 2 over x plus 3 over x squared. So let's do a couple others here. So in this one I have x over x plus 2 plus 4x over x minus 6. Well here the least common multiple of the quantity x plus 2 and the quantity x minus 6 is the quantity x plus 2 times the quantity x minus 6. So for the first fraction I have x over x plus 2. I'll have to multiply top and bottom of that fraction by x minus 6, x minus 6. Make my division a little longer. And then for the other one, the 4x part, I'll have, well, 4x over x minus 6. And it never hurts to put things in parentheses just to remind yourself that you're going to have to distribute things out. Well, for the term, the, the second term, I'll have to multiply top and bottom by x plus 2 over x plus 2. And typically on these problems, you don't need to do anything to the denominator. So I'm going to add them together. Okay, I will have common denominators of, in this case, x plus 2 times x minus 6. And I'm not even going to multiply that out. The top part I will, however, multiply out. So I'll have to do some distributing. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 6 is negative 6x. And then I've got a positive 4x times x, which is 4x squared. A 4x times a positive 2, that's positive 8x. And the last thing I'm going to do here is simply collect my like terms in the numerator. So again, I'm not going to do anything to the bottom. I'm just going to write it as x plus 2, x minus 6. I have a positive x squared, a positive 4x squared. That'll give me positive 5x squared. I have a negative 6x, a positive 8x, that'll give me a positive 2x. And that would be considered, again, the simplified version of the original expression. Okay, So, again, it doesn't look like you're doing much, but definitely this trick of getting common denominators for rational expressions, that's going to be usually a lot of times one of the first things you're going to do to end up solving an equation. So let's do one more here. So in this case, I've got x minus 1 divided by x squared plus 5x plus 6. And then I'm subtracting 5 over x plus 3. So you could do the same thing in the last one. You could multiply top and bottom of the left side by x plus 3, top and bottom of the right side by this x squared plus 5x plus 6. Um, and then you could simplify everything down. But an easier way to do this one 
and this is something you usually want to keep in the back of your mind, is, is everything in the denominator already factored out? Well, x squared plus 5x plus 6, you can factor that as x plus 2 times x plus 3, and then I have my minus 5 over x plus 3. Well, looking at this, the least common multiple on the left side of x plus 2, x plus 3, and then a single x plus 3, the only thing that's missing from the denominator of the right side is this x plus 2 term. So all I'm going to do on the right hand side, I'm not going to do anything to the first fraction, it's already got kind of a good denominator. I'll multiply top and bottom by x plus 2, x plus 2. So let's see here. So on the first part, again, I'm just going to have x minus 1 over x plus 2 times x plus 3. There's my minus sign. And I'm going to go ahead and distribute in the numerator. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times 2 is positive 10. And then still in the bottom, I have my x plus 3, x plus 2 term. And again, now all I'm going to do is write this as a single fraction. On the bottom, I have x plus 2, x plus 3. And now I have to be a little careful because of this negative sign. This negative distributes to both terms. So I'll really get x minus 5x. And then I still have my negative 1 from the first part. And then I'll, so I'll have negative 1 minus 10. And again, I can collect my like terms. x minus 5x is negative 4x. Negative 1 minus 10 is negative 11. That's all being divided by x plus 2 times x plus 3. And again, that would be your simplified expression in this case. Okay. So again, a trick to look for, make sure that things are factored all the way down. If some of this is a little confusing, maybe it's been a while since you've done these rational expressions, one thing I encourage you to do is just add and subtract fractions with just plain old numbers. You know, one-third plus one-fourth, or one-fifth plus three-tenths. And, you know, the same trick you're using on those are going to be the same basic idea you're using on these problems as well. So, if you need to see some more videos, feel free to take a look at my website. Send me an email if you got some questions. I'll be happy to get to them as soon as I can. Um, and I hope this helps.